All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? In this video, what I'm gonna do is go through 20 different problems of a quadratic formula. Because I know if you can solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula 20 times, or at least maybe you can watch me or try these down on your own, then trust me, you are going to be confident in being able to solve any quadratic with quadratic formula. So before we start, just remember what the quadratic formula is. It's going to be x is equal to opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus a4 times a times c, and that's all over a to a. And again, this is only going to be when we have a quadratic in standard form. So ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So again, we're going to use the quadratic formula when we want to be able to find the solutions, the zeros, the x-intercept of the quadratic. Now, some of these problems, you could go ahead and factor them. Some of these are you could use completing the square, but I want to focus on using the quadratic formula not because I don't think those other operations are important, which I believe they're probably just as important, if more important than the quadratic formula. Um, I just want to make sure you have are confident when using the quadratic formula. So let's go and take a look at this first question. I'm going to try to work these probably quickly um, as I can. So therefore, you can get a um, sufficient knowledge of me kind of working my way through and talking through it. All right. So in first question, notice that it's in standard form. Okay. So basically, what we're going to want to do is identify our A, B, and C. So A is equal to 1. B is equal to a 4 and c is equal to five. I'm not gonna do this every single time, but I just want you to kind of see um, how I'm labeling everything. And then basically I'm just going to plug them into formula. So x is going to equal opposite of b, which is a negative four. And then we have plus or minus the square root here of a four. Now I'm gonna use parentheses here just so you can kind of see that, um, that I'm plugging that in. So four squared minus a four times a times a c. And again, that's all over a2 times a, which is just one, but therefore you can just see it's right in there. I'm not going to write that every single time, but you can see where that goes. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and simplify the discriminant. So the discriminant is what we're going to put under our radical. And when you're studying quadratic equations, um, the discriminant is going to tell you the type of solutions that you're going to have. One real, two real, um, two rational, two irrational, or you could have two complex um, solutions as well. So in this case, we have 16 minus 4 times 5. So 4 times 5 is going to be a 20. So let's just go and write this out. So 16 minus a 20 all over 2. And the first problem is going to actually deal with some non-real complex numbers. So I have a negative 4 plus or minus here. And that's going to be a square root of 4. I'm sorry, negative 4, right? 16 minus 20 is going to be a negative 4. And then again, that's all divided by 2. Now, we have to remember how to simplify when we have a, a negative radical. So we can't use our real number system. In this case, we're going to do our imaginary number system. Um, just remember the imaginary unit to the square root of negative 1 is going to equal to an i. So therefore, in this case, um, what I can do is I can take the square root of 4, which is going to be 2, and the square root of negative 1, right? Negative 1 times 4 is um, negative 1 times, yeah, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So the square root of negative 1 is going to be an i. So therefore, this is a negative 4 plus or minus a 2i divided by 2. And now I can distribute this 2 into both these terms. And therefore, that's a negative 2 plus or minus a i. Okay, so I divided the 2 into both of those. So therefore, um, this would have no real x-intercepts or no real solutions, but we have two complex over here. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to another problem. So again, we'll move this in a little bit quicker. You can see this equation is set equal to y. That's no problem, guys. Just go ahead and set it equal to 0. So if you say, all right, now it's in standard form, though, we're all good. All right, I'm not going to label the A, B, and C. You can do that as you're learning and going through this process. But in this case, let's try to move a little bit quicker. So x again equal to opposite of B, which is going to be a 4, plus or minus. Now, negative 4 squared is going to be a positive 16 minus a 4 times A. I'm still going to write the A just so I want you to see that. And then times a negative 5. Okay, so now in this case, I have a negative 4 times a negative 5, which is going to be a positive 20. 20 plus 16 is going to be 836. Don't forget to write, though, the 2 times 1, or 2 times A, I'm sorry. All right, so we have 4 plus or minus. Let's see what's in our discriminant here. So 20 plus 16 is going to be 836. Divided by 2, square root of 36, guys, is just going to be a 6. So I have a 4 plus or minus a 6 divided by 2. Now, in this case, you can do this a couple different ways. You can divide the two into both of these terms, which it, since it does divide into it, um, or, and then simplify, doing plus or minus, or you could just add the numerators and subtract the numerators and then divide by two. It doesn't really matter which one you want to do, guys. Um, in this case, I'm just going to, I'm going to simplify it first and then go from there. So in this case, we have two plus um, three is going to be a five, and then we have two minus three, which is going to be a negative one. So therefore, those are going to be your two solutions or your two x-intercepts in this case. Okay, and we can actually write them like that. All right. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to our next one. So in this case, 
we have an A, A is six. Um, so again, set it equal to zero. All right, so um, we have opposite of B. So again, remember that's a negative one right there. So it's gonna be one. Uh, let's not get lazy here. So X equals to a positive one, right? The opposite of B, um, plus or minus, always gonna have that plus or minus. Negative one squared is just one, minus a four times A um, times C. Okay. And then that's all divided by a two times a, which in this case, remember, is six. All right, so now we have one plus or minus. Let's see here. So um, a, a couple ways you could do this. You could do six times negative five, which is negative 30. Negative 30 times four. So three times four is, is 12, right? So a 30 times four is going to be 120. But again, it's a negative times negative, so it's going to be a positive. Um, so one plus a positive 120 is going to be 121. And therefore, that's going to be divided by 12. Um, square root of 121 is just going to be 11. So 1 plus or minus 11 divided by 12. Now, in this case, the 12 does not divide into this evenly, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to do the quick, I'm just going to do them separately here. So I can do 1 plus 12, which is going to be a 12 over 12, which is equal to a 1. And then I can also do 1 minus a 11, which is going to be a negative 10 over a 12, which I can now simplify, divide by 2 in the top and bottom. And that's going to be a negative 5 over a 6. Um, this equation, let's set it equal to zero. And so therefore I have X equals opposite of B. So that's going to be three plus or minus the square root of a negative three squared, which is going to be a nine minus a four times a times C, um, divided by a two times a. Okay. There, there we go. Um, so I have three plus or minus, um, let's see here. So in this case, I'll do four times two. Uh, which is going to be, so a negative four times two, which is being negative eight, negative eight times a three is going to be a uh, negative eight times three, negative eight times three is going to be a positive 24. So therefore it's a nine plus a 24 divided by four, right? So 12, 24. Yep. And that's going to be positive. And then here I can add these together. That's going to give me a 33. Um, so let's see. So that'd be square root of 33 divided by four. Okay, um, so now we have something that we cannot take the square root of, right? Um, so we wanna see, all right, is there any square numbers like four, nine, 16, 25 that evenly divide into 33? And in this case, no, there's not, right? So therefore, since we cannot simplify this, that's gonna be our final answer. So we're gonna have two answers, right? So we have three plus the square root of 33 divided by four, and we have X equals a three minus the square root of 33 divided by four. So that's going to be your final answer in that case. All right, now let's go ahead and work on some different problems that are going to be a little bit more tricky for students because now you notice that these are not in standard form, right? Again, the quadratic formula, guys, only works when you have zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c, only. So what we need to do is get these all over to the same side. Then we can apply the quadratic formula. Since I already have an x squared that's positive, I'm just going to add the 4x to both sides and then subtract the 10 from both sides. So therefore, I'm going to have an x squared plus a 4x minus 10 is equal to 0. Now, I can go and apply the quadratic formula. So therefore, x is going to equal um, a opposite of b. So that's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 4 squared is going to be a 16 minus a 4 times a times c. And therefore, that's all going to be a 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. All right, that's looking a little off. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and multiply these. So this is four times a 10. So that's going to be, four times 10 is going to be a, four times 10 is going to be a 40, um, but that's gonna be a positive 40 plus 16 is going to be a 56. So X is equal to a negative four plus or minus a square root of 56. And sorry, my handwriting is a little off. So that's a two times one, right? So that's just gonna be a two. All right, again, we need to figure out what if there a number that evenly divides um, into 56 and a square number. So again, 4, 9, 16, um, 16, 25, 36. I'm going to say, well, I think 4 goes in there, right? Because 4 goes into 40, and then the remainder of 40 is going to be a 16. So that looks like that's going to be 4 more times. So it's going to be in there 14 times. Um, so therefore, this is going to equal a negative four plus or minus a four. Oops, let me write it like this. So now we're gonna have to simplify this radical. So I'll show you what we're gonna do here. So it's gonna be four times a 14, right? Four times 14 is 16 divided by two. 
Okay, now using the rules of radicals here, I can simplify the square root of 4 as 2. I can't simplify the square root of 14. So therefore, this is going to be an x equals a negative 4 plus or minus a 2 square root of 14 divided by 2. Now again, remember like in the, in the first problem, this 2 evenly divides into these two. So I'm just going to leave my answer with this plus or minus. So you can see here it's a negative 2 plus or minus a square root of 14. Okay? Uh, whew, now we got some bigger numbers. Now we're going to have a little fun. All right, so again, we're just going to set this equal to 0, and let's kind of go through this. So there's nothing really I can simplify. A lot of times I always like to see if you can simplify something, um, because the cool thing about when you have quadratic equations, if you have a scalar, if you multiply or divide it by a certain number, even if you multiply by a negative number, you're not actually going to be changing the zeros. You're just stretching and compressing the graph. So we can use multiplication and division to simplify our quadratic. In this case, though, um, I, there's nothing that evenly divides into all of these. So I'm just going to leave it. You could divide out the negative, but I think it's okay to kind of go from there. So let's see how bad this is going to get. So we have a negative 20, which is my opposite of b, plus or minus. The square root here of b squared, so that's going to be 20 squared, which is 400, minus a 4 times a times c. And that's going to be all over a 2 times negative 4. Okay, so in this case I have, well, 4 times 25 is 100, so negative times a negative is going to be um, a positive, and then times another negative is going to be a negative, and 8 times 25 is going to be, um, so that'd be 8 times 25, that'd be 100, and that's going to be 200 from that case. Did I mess that up? Hold on, let me check my ass. So negative 4 times negative 4. Why am I thinking it's 400? 8 times negative 4. Huh. Oh, I'm an idiot. I was thinking 8 times 2. I don't know why I was thinking... Yeah, and then a size four. I'm an idiot. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I was looking, I was doing my calculations, and I'm like, wait a minute, that, that'd be two times eight. All right. All right, so when you start doing a whole bunch of problems, this is where your brain starts going cuckoo. So if you're watching at this point, sorry if I make a little mental mistakes. I was thinking to myself two times eight. I don't know why. All right, so that's going to be a, a negative 400, so that's going to go to zero. So plus or minus a square root of 400 minus another 400, which is going to be zero, divided by negative eight. So guess what? That's just going to go away. So we're going to only have one solution in this case. So now I'm going to have a negative 20 divided by a negative 8. Well, now, guys, what we can do is just divide, you know, a, what's the top number? Um, 4. Negative divided by negative is just going to reduce to a positive. And I can divide a 4 in the top and bottom. And so that's going to be a positive 5 halves. Okay, thought I was going crazy. All right, now in this case, um, we have it, everything over on the left-hand side, equal to zero. Again, it doesn't matter. Don't let that problem go ahead and confuse you guys. Um, again, we're just going to have x is equal to opposite b, so negative 6, plus or minus the square root of 6 squared, which is going to be 36, minus a 4 times a times c, and divided by 2 times 1. Okay, so hopefully this one will be fairly simple. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Um, so therefore, negative 4 times 15 is going to be a... Uh, 60. And so 36 minus a 60 is 36 minus a 60 is going to be negative 24. So I have a negative 6 plus or minus a square root of a negative 24 divided by 2. Okay. So again, we need to figure out what square number um, divides into negative 24. Sometimes it can't be simplified, but in this case, we know that 4 can go into there. Um, so therefore, let's see here. We'll have a negative 6 plus or minus a, we can rewrite this as a negative 4 times a 6 what am I doing? I don't want to write it like that. I want to write this as a 4. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. 4 times 6 divided by 2. Okay, so I can simplify the square root of 4, square root of negative 4, as a 2i, right? Um, and then we can't do the square root of 6 anything, so we're just going to leave that there. So x equals a negative 6 plus or minus a 2i square root of 6 all divided by 2. And I can divide this 2 into both of those. So x is equal to a negative 3 plus or minus a i square root of six. Okay, now we got a big one. Now, again, I want to see if I can simplify something, but I know four does not divide into this number. So we're kind of stuck here. Uh, so we're probably going to use a calculator, but that's okay. You should have a handy calculator with you anyways. 
So I have, um, let's see, x equals opposite of b. Uh, let's make sure it's in standard form, which it is. Okay. So I have 57 plus or minus square root of 57 squared, which I have no idea what that is, minus a 4 times a, which is a 45, times c, which is a negative 4. Okay, and that's going to be all divided by a 2 times 45, which hopefully I, I recognize that one. That's 90, so that's easy. All right, so, so we have negative 57 plus or minus. All right, so this one, we're actually going to break it out step by step. So we have 57 squared. That's going to be 3,249. So 3,249. Now, it says a minus, right? But technically, we have a minus times a minus or a negative times a negative, so that's going to be positive. So I'm just going to do 4 times 45 times 4. And that's going to be a 720. And again, that's all over a 90. So let's go ahead and see what that's going to be. I could do the math in my head, but I don't want to make a mistake, so I'm just going to type it in my calculator to be safe. And that's 3,969. So negative 57 plus a minus a 3,969. Now, hopefully that is a square number because if not, then we need to find a square number that evenly divides into it. And that can be kind of crazy um, from on there. So I'm going to take the square root of that number and guess what? It is. It's square root of 63. So x is equal to a negative 57 plus or minus a 63 divided by 90. Okay. So now in this case, you might be like, well, these are going to be like too big, but guys, this is actually isn't that bad. Negative 57 plus 63, right? The difference in those two is just going to be 6, a positive 6. So x is equal to um, a 6 over 90. It's 90, which is just going to be a, let's see, 6 goes into 90 15 times. So that's a 1 over a 15. And then we could also do um, subtraction. So therefore, that's going to be, what, a negative 120. So x equals a negative 120 all over 90. And again, you can see a 30 is going to divide into both of those. So therefore, that's going to be a negative 4 thirds. Whew. All right, we're almost halfway done, guys. And now we're getting into some problems that, again, are going to have some missing parts. Um, so in this case, we have x squared plus 2x equals a 3. Um, so again, I got to set this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 3 on both sides. So now if I have a x squared plus a 2x minus 3 is equal to a 0. All right, so x equals a negative 2 plus or minus, let's see, a 2 squared. So it's going to be a 4 minus a 4. I hate when my 4s do that. 4 times a times negative 3 divided by a 2 times 1. All right, so it's a negative 2 plus or minus. Let's see here. So this is 4. That's going to be 12, right? So 4... Um, plus 12, so, right? Because that's negative 4 times negative 3. So that's going to be a positive 12. Um, ah, 12 plus 4 is going to be 16. Divided by 2. We know the square root of 16, right, guys? So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 is just 4. Divide by 2. Now, in this case, I'm going to do it the other way. I'm just going to add them up and then divide by 2. So negative 2 um, plus 4 is going to be a positive 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to be a 1. And then negative 2 minus 4 is going to be negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is going to equal to a negative 3. All right, now this one, hopefully you know how to factor this. But again, I still want to just go through it using the quadratic formula, just in case maybe you're like, I have no idea how to factor it. So set equals 0. Um, therefore, we're going to have x equals opposite 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared equals a 36. And again, if you know how to factor this, you know that it's a perfect square trinomial, meaning that there's only going to be one solution. So 36 minus a 4 times a, um, 4 times a, 4 times a times c, which is a 9. Okay, and therefore then divided by a 2 times 1, which is just 2. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. Minus 36 is going to be 0. So again, we don't really even need to, eh, you know, let's include that. Plus or minus the square root of 0, which is 0, divided by 2. And guess what? We have a 3. So just to kind of recap, as since we're at this halfway point, I want you to kind of notice a couple things. Whenever my discriminant is zero, I only have one solution. Whenever my discriminant is going to be positive and I can take the square root of it, I'm going to have two real rational solutions. When um, that is going to be two real rational solutions, rational, rational meaning they're fractions. Um, in this case, I had my um, radicand or my discriminant was negative, right? So therefore I have two non-real or two complex solutions. Here again, it's zero, one real solution. Here again, it is um, 
it is real. Um, these are real. It's positive, but I cannot. But they're not square numbers. So therefore, these are going to be two real irrational solutions. So if the discriminant is positive, if it's square number, you have two real rational. If it's non, um, if it's non square, therefore you're going to have two real irrational solutions. Okay. And I just want you to kind of notice that about these points: two real um, irrational. In this case, you're going to have um, two real rational solutions, right? Because 121 is a square number. Here you have a square number, so you're going to have two real solutions. Why did I write it like that? X is no x equals five. Write it like that. Oops. Um, and then again, we had negative, so therefore it's going to be two complex solutions. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. Now we have our little break. Uh oh, now we have some missing terms. Now, when you guys have missing terms, you don't have to do this. What I prefer to do though is do a little counting. So I'm going to have an x squared plus a zero x plus seven. Okay, so x is going to equal to a zero plus or minus a square root of a zero squared. I just like to show things where they're at so therefore you guys can see them. You don't have to glue me if you don't want to. Minus a four times a times c. Okay, and then all divided by a two times a. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So therefore it's a negative four times two, which is a negative eight. Negative eight um, times seven is going to be a, uh, negative eight times seven is going to be a negative 56 in this case. Um, Yes, negative 56. So I have plus or minus a negative 56. And then that's going to be divided by a four. Sorry, that's under the radical. So again, we need to figure out a square number. Remember, four went into there 14 times. Um, again, we can, um, that's going to be a four I though. So I can rewrite this as um, a four times 14, but again, including the I. So take a square root of four, which is going to be a two. So it's plus or minus a two I times the square root of 14 divided by four, and therefore I can just go ahead and simplify, reduce this, so I divide a two on the top and bottom, and it'd be plus or minus a i square root of 14 divided by two, all right? So basically what I did is I just took the two over four and reduced that over to one half. Now in this problem, you have to be like, ah, there's more big numbers, right? So here's the tip that I want you to follow in this one. Just divide everything by three. It's gonna make your life so much easier. w squared minus a four w plus a four is equal to zero. Okay. And again, guys, all that's doing dividing by three is that's just shrinking the solution. But if you look at this in Desmos, if you go ahead and graph this function and graph that function, they have the exact same zeros. So if you can simplify something, which we haven't been able to simplify in many and the other problems, um, if you can simplify, try to always look to do that. Make sure it's in standard form and then see if you can simplify it. So now let's go and use the quadratic form. So X is equal to um, a positive four. Opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16 minus a 4 times a times a c, divided by a 2 times a, which is going to be a 1. All right, so now let's go ahead and simplify that discriminant. So again, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is going to be a 0 divided by 2. Again, we're going to have one's positive solution, right? It's equal to 0, so we're only going to have one solution. 4 divided by 2 is just going to be equal a 2. Um... Okay, this one has a lot of negatives. Nobody likes negatives. So let's go through these. Just remember, guys, these are negative ones, right? So negative one there, negative one there. Um, can't really simplify this. So x equals a positive one plus or minus the square root of negative one squared, which is one, minus a four times a negative one times a c. All right, um, divided by a two times negative one. All right, so one plus or minus. I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> One plus or minus. Okay, so in this case, we're going to negative four times negative one, which is a positive four, times a negative four again, which is going to be a negative four. So it's one minus a four. Um, so a negative four and is going to be a negative three. Did I go ahead and look at that negative four? Ah, I think I did. So because that's going to, that goes a positive one. Yeah, negative three. And then two times negative one is going to be a negative two. Now, in this case, I can't simplify this any further, right? So therefore, I'm just going to leave that as an i times square root of three. So therefore, it's going to be 1 plus or minus a i square root of 3 divided by a negative 2. Now, again, you can divide this negative 2 into both these. It doesn't really impact with this i um, in this case because technically all that's simply doing is just go ahead and um, you still have the plus or minus, right? So it's not really going to impact it as much in that case. Um, but again, I'll just leave this as in that format. But you can divide that negative 2 into both of those terms. Um, but again, the plus or minus is still going to be there. Now, in this case, we notice we don't have a C, right? So I'm going to include a C, which is going to be a plus zero. Put it into standard form, set equal to zero. 
right? And you notice it didn't really matter in that case. Um, and now let's just go and do the quadratic formula. So x is going to equal to opposite of b, which is 1, right? So the opposite of b is going to be negative 1 plus or minus a square root of 1 squared, which is 1, uh, minus a 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 0. So that's interesting. When you have that times c, that's going to make that whole thing 0. So now you're just going to have a square root of 1. Um, so that's going to be 0 times all that. So you're just going to have a 1. Opposite of b. Huh. And then, therefore, that's going to be divided by a 2 times a, which is 4. Okay. So a negative 1 plus or minus, that's all 0. So you have square root of 1, which is just 1, divided by a 2 times 4, which is 8. So let's go and do these separately. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 divided by 8 is 0. Negative 1 minus 1, so you owe me a dollar, you borrow another dollar, is negative 2 um, divided by 8, which is a negative 1 fourth. Voila. So now we got two answers in that solution, which again makes sense, right? Because... Um, yeah, it was a square number, which is one. This one was a negative number, so you have two real irrational solutions. Uh, let's go into this one. Again, we don't have a 0x, so I'm just going to, or we don't have a b, so this is x squared um, plus a 0x plus 1 half. Okay, so x is going to equal to a opposite of b, which is 0, plus or minus a square root of a 0 squared, which is 0, minus a 4 times a times c. All right, and again, what do we know about um, 1 half times negative 4, which is going to be a negative 2. And again, remember, that's all 2 times 1, right? All right, so negative 4 times 1 half is going to be a negative 2. Um, so x is going to equal plus or minus the square root of a negative 2 divided by 2. And again, guys, we can't really simplify anything here. So again, all we're going to do is bring this i out from that case. So again, because you can, you can rewrite this as you know, a 2 times a negative 1, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So therefore, it's plus or minus a i squared of 2 divided by a 2. All right. Um, this one can't really simplify anything out. So therefore, I'm just going to go for it again. So x is equal to a positive 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus a 4 times a times c, which is 8, divided by a 2 times a. All right. So let's go and simplify the um, discriminant here. So in this case, I have a 4 times 3, which is 12 times 8. I'm going to use my calculator here just to make sure. So 4 times 3 times 8, 96. And therefore, that should be a negative 96. So 9 minus 96 is a negative 87. Okay. And negative 87 divided by 6. That is not, I don't think there's any square numbers that evenly divide into that. Right? So therefore, again, just like I did over here, I'm just going to take this as an i and then leave it. So x plus i, square root of 87, divided by 6. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and move on. So we only got four more problems, guys. All right. So in this case, um, I have 0 equals uh, x squared plus 0x minus 5. Got another one of those. Um, so x equals a 0 plus or minus square root of a 0 squared minus a 4 times a times c divided by a 2 times a. In this case, that's going to be what? A positive 20. So therefore, I'm going to have plus or minus square root of 20 divided by 2. Now, square root of 20 can be rewritten as a square root of 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is going to be 2. So it's going to be plus or minus a 2 square root of 5 divided by 2. That can divide out. So I get a two real irrational solutions, which is exactly what I was um, looking for in that case. In this case, again, I don't have a zero or a C. Um, so I have X equals um, three plus or minus the square root of negative three squared, which is a nine minus a four times a times C, which is going to be a zero. So again, that all goes to zero divided by two times a, which is two. So I have a three plus or minus the square root of nine is just going to be a three. Oops, what am I doing? That's going to be 3 divided by 2. Um, and let's go and do it. So 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is going to be a 3. 3 minus 3 is a 0. 0 divided by 2 is going to be a 0. So therefore, those are going to be our two solutions. And now we're on to our last two. And oh, you got to be kidding me. Fractions. Okay. So remember what I showed you guys. Remember what I told you. You can always multiply by exponent numbers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything. Again, this is equal to zero, right? So set equal to zero, you're good. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by four. Because I multiply by four, two divides on four, so get, that gets rid of that fraction. And then four divides on four, so that gets rid, rid of that fraction. So let's multiply everything times four to get rid of this. So I do that. I have four times zero is just zero. 
Okay, so two divides into four, two times, two times three is going to be a six, x squared, minus four divides into four one time, so that's a minus a 27 x, and four times nine is going to be a positive 36. Now, in this case, you might be like, all right, well, these are still big numbers. Yeah, but again, guess what? You can now divide everything by three to further simplify this. So zero is equal to a two x squared minus a nine x plus a 12. Still some decently big numbers, but still something you can go ahead and work on. So x is equal to a nine plus or minus the square root of nine squared, which is an 81 minus a four times two times a 12. Okay. And then that's divide, all divided by a two times a, which is a two times two. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure we have this here. So I have a, so it's gonna be negative number, right? So four times two, which is eight times 12 is a negative 96. Well, again, 81 minus 96 is gonna be negative 15. So I have a nine plus or minus negative 15 divided by four. And the cool thing is guys, I can't simplify with the negative 15. So therefore it's a nine plus or minus a I square root of 15 divided by four. And voila, we're kind of done. All right, last question, big numbers. I think everything could be divided by nine, right? So everything divides by nine. Again, that's equal to zero. So let's have a zero. Let's see what we get here. So we get an X squared. Um, that is going to be a seven X. And then 162 divided by nine, I think that works. 162 divided by nine equals 18, right? So minus an 18. Okay, so now let's do the quadratic formula, right? To simplify it, don't be worried about these big numbers. So X equals a positive seven, positive seven, plus or minus the square root of negative seven squared, which is a 49, minus a four times a, which is one times a C. Again, this is gonna be you know, some more big numbers, so I'm gonna use my calculator. And then that's all divided by two times a. All right, so x equals seven plus or minus square root um, four times 18. So that's gonna be what, 36? That's gonna be 72. Uh, so last question, should I just go ahead and use my calculator? 49 minus 72 should be 23. Let's just do it. So 49. Ooh, that's actually gonna be a positive, right? So that's a negative times a negative. So that's a four times a negative 18. All right, and then plus 49, it's 121. Okay, whew, I was like, ah, that's 121 divided by two. And then we know the square root of 121, right? That's going to be 11. So X equals a seven plus or minus um, 11 divided by two. All right, so now let's just kind of go through the work here. So seven plus 11 is going to be an 18. 18 divided by two is going to be a nine. Seven minus 11 is a negative four. Negative four divided by two is a negative two. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is 20 problems using the quadratic formula. I hope this video was valuable for you. I hope you went through all the problems with me. And if you have any more questions or need more help with solving quadratic equations, then go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here.